what the word extraordinary means. What do you use it? Something really, really good. What do you use it? Something not ordinary. I like that. Anybody else have something else they'd like to add to extraordinary? Out of this world. I like it. All right. Well, today I have a story about an ordinary man who had an extraordinary dream. And his name was Harvey Duck. Now, he was an ordinary man, but he had an extraordinary dream that he wanted everyone to be treated, be treated equally, no matter who you loved or where you lived. Now that kind of just makes sense, doesn't it? But it was a very big dream. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so he had this idea that he was going to make everyone hear his story. So he had a big booming voice and he went out to tell a story that everyone should be allowed to be treated the same. Everyone should be able to love and live with whoever they wanted, wherever they wanted. And as he went out to tell his story, some people listened, a few did not, and most did not. But did that deter him? What do you think? No. He went on telling his story. And then he got, sorry, then he got an idea. A bigger idea. No, it's not. He got a bigger idea. His idea was, what if I was the person who made the laws and not only the person who wanted to change the laws? So he decided to run for an office called the Board of Supervisors. Now, do you think he won the first time? It sounds boring. Yeah, it maybe does sound a little boring to you. But it was very exciting. The first time he ran, he did it win. The second time he ran, what do you think? He didn't win. The third time he ran, do you think he won? Yes. No. <laughs> but the fourth time he ran, he won. Because he was not going to give up on this extraordinary dream. Well, you can, that's all right, but he finally won. He didn't want to give up. He wanted to win. So he won, and he was able to work on some laws. So then he had an idea that he had a lot of marches and places they went to to tell the story. And where he got this idea, another great idea, that there should be some kind of symbol. You know how, like, when you see this symbol, you know it means what? Recycling. When you see this symbol, you know what? American flag. How about the symbol? Peace. Peace. So he had an idea that we needed a symbol. So he went to his friend, Gilbert Banks, who was an artist, and he said, we need a symbol. And his friend said, I know what we need. We need a flag. So he started in the work with all of his volunteers and his friends, and they took all kinds of material and colored it in all different colors, and began to sew it together, and they created this beautiful flag of eight colors that was going to be the symbol. And they used it for the first time in their march. In June, on June 25th, was it just in like two weeks from now, but over 41 years ago, they began to use it. And as they walked down the road, just telling their story again of equality for everyone, love for everyone, they started to feel hope that maybe there could be a difference. And the amazing part is, they started to feel pride that this was something that really could happen and that people were starting to listen. But then something very, very sad happened just five months after that. He did die. He and the mayor of San Francisco, somebody came man who did not know about Harvey did not know what he said or 
wrong, and they can wrong. And instead of throwing out the flag that night, or five months later, all of those supporters who believed in equality, love, hope, and pride, they took candles to the street. And it was a mile long, I want you to imagine, a mile is like eight times around our sanctuary. A mile of candles weaving all through the streets. And do you think our remote story died that day? It did not. It went on because they said he was an ordinary man with an extraordinary dream and we are not going to let that dream die. So more and more flags started to show up everywhere and a big community started to come. And at one point, Gilbert Banks created another flag in 1994 that was a mile long, now imagine that, eight times around here, a pride flag that big, 30 feet across, it took 10,000 people to carry it. Men and women and children all walking and carrying this flag and saying the same message that everyone needs to know. Equality for all, love for all, hope for all, and pride for all. And you know, it sounds like the message that God says to us and that we're hearing today in our Pentecost story. It's telling us God wants us to treat each other and every one of us like our brother and sister. God wants us to know that love is the most important thing. God gives us hope each day as we open our eyes that the world can be a little better if we love and treat each other kindly and pride in who we are because God has created each of us just the way we are supposed to be. So it's a pretty good message and a pretty wonderful theme that that flag was created and that little by little, we're getting better. That's Dear God, you have brought us together to treat one another as equals, to love one another, to be able to love who we love, to have pride in who we are as a creation of you, and to have hope for a better world. 